I share this this um, experience of my first Halloween without adult supervision. And um, my, uh, I, I want to say it was either in fourth or fifth grade. I know it was in elementary, but but uh, um, another benefit of growing up in in small town Utah, um, me and my best friend, uh, his name was Jason, and um, we uh, we you, it, that this particular Halloween it fell on a school day. So, you know, the, the school day went by just like normally and uh, we went home and, and threw on our costumes and we met up at his house and we went out on this adventure and it, it, it turned into quite an adventure. <laughs> um, so we, we uh, were, were going through uh, the neighborhoods near his house and we, uh, uh, we amassed this really impressive amount of candy and uh, – um, we, we of course used pillowcases and, uh, it had a couple of hours had passed and we were both in a neighborhood that neither of us had ever been in before. Um, and it was starting to get dark, but, uh, you know, we were just really hauling in the candy. So we didn't really pay too much mind. And we started down the street and, this is exactly, this is not embellishment. This is exactly how it played out. But I just had a sensation that something bad was about to happen. So I planted my feet. I stopped walking. And my poor friend Jason, you know, he apparently did not pick up on the, the bad vibes. And he kept on his, um, you know, his his happy way. And before he knew it, he found himself in the midst of the most terrifying motley group of middle school girls you ever laid your eyes on. Oh my goodness. And uh, I'll, I, I'll, I'll I, <laughs> allow me to take a quick sidebar and point out that this is, you know, we were, um, you know, it was late elementary. So it's yeah. that, that, that time in adolescence where the girls are uh, maturing faster than the boys. So, um, these girls are like significantly larger than us <laughs> and they're up to no good. And that becomes very immediately apparent because they start pushing Jason around and they knock mm. him down and they take his candy and then they go on their merry way. And then finally my good friend instincts kick in and I, mm. I go pat him on the back and help him up and mm. um, God bless him. I convinced him to, continue trick-or-treating i told him you know the night's young we can recoup our losses and that's exactly what we did but anyway <laughs> um to make a long story short this this uh, first halloween without adult supervision we we uh um we, we we found ourselves in um even further away from his house and it's really pitch black out it's time to get home and um he has this great idea that we take a shortcut and we we managed to um well, he man, I didn't. I, I had, I was on fire this evening. I, you know, I avoided all this catastrophe. But mm -hmm. um, to make a long story short, he managed to fall into a muddy trench oh um, in this construction site, and he wound up just soaked and just miserable. And all of his candy was waterlogged. But anyway, um, yeah. <laughs> I can see why he yeah, donned a hockey. Been... I can see why he donned a hockey mask. <laughs> Yes, exactly. <laughs> His name is Jason. <laughs> that, yes, yes, yep. <laughs> That's <laughs> those, great. Those teenagers stole his candy. Now they'll pay. <laughs> so what kind of uh, scary books or horror books were you reading as a, as a kid? What were um, some of your favorites? So, well, um, you know, I, I think what really got me initially into the genre – were the the slightly dark um, short stories that they assigned at school and 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 specific ones fell well yeah 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 I can't I can't think of any real specific ones on the fly but the ones that really got their hooks into me it should be a no surprise to anyone close to my age but um, the goose 
Bumps series, of course, and uh, the uh, um, what was it? Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. That series mm-hmm. as well. Um, there was a, a bookstore in my hometown that I love to go and just peruse the bookshelves. And um, one of the happiest moments in my adolescence was going in there and finding that they had added to their Goosebumps collection and being able to look at that nifty cover art. Mm. And I just I, I love those books. Um, the uh, the scary the the scary stories to tell in the dark series. Oh my gosh, that that series I I loved as well. Um, in fact, when I was a kid, and for the longest time, I thought that this was just lost to history. But uh, um, I actually found a someone had uploaded this to YouTube. But there was an audiobook uh, version of that that came out along with the books back in the early '90s. Mm-hmm. Um, I had it on cassette, but that was such a prized mm-hmm. possession when I was a kid. Yeah. All right. Now, of course, the important part: where did the idea of writing come to you? Was it in elementary school? Was it later in life? You know, um, I, I've been fascinated with writing. I remember, though, it, w- it would have been in junior high. Um, junior high, English class, and uh, I wish I could think of the story. I, I think it was a – oh, the name uh, – some French writer, some, some master of ironic short stories um, – and I'm, I'm sure his name will come to me later, but uh, it, it was one of his stories, uh, a, a lot like the O. Henry short stories, but just mm-hmm. those really ironic, um, darkly ironic short stories that uh, grade school teachers, English teachers tend to pepper their curriculum with. But we were reading a story like that in, I think, seventh grade English, and you know, I, I'd long been a, a, a voracious reader. In fact, one of the main reasons why I have to wear glasses is that I put so much strain on my eyes. Um, <laughs> I've, I've, I, I inherited my grandfather's lazy eye, but as a, at a very young age, I trained my eye to go straight when they're open. Um, I, I was informed uh, as a child that uh, the, the eye doctor told me that when I close my eyes, they go completely crossed. So. That, yeah, exactly. Um, there's there's some medical term for it, but uh, I won't butcher it. Um, but that, in addition to, you know, all the reading and the strain that that caused is what caused my, my eyesight to deteriorate. But um, totally worth it. Uh, so I was long, you know, long a fan of, of reading literature, but it, it was around seventh grade where I thought to myself, yeah, you know, I think I could probably do this or how, how fun would it be to, to create these sort of stories on my own? Um, so yeah, around that time. And so what did you write? Do you remember what you wrote at such an early age? You know, I, uh, I I remember writing um, cheesy, humorous, but ultimately bad poetry. Um, I don't – no, I did. Actually, I did. I, I, I remember I, I, I tried my hand at a number of short stories around that same time, um, and I, I actually remember entering – I don't know if it was necessarily for a contest, but I remember that there was some sort of, it was like an artist showcase in middle school. Um, and you could do a, a work of um, visual art or you could do a piece of literature. And I remember writing a story um, that was semi inspired by the X Files. I was a big fan of the X Files mm. growing up. Um, in fact, I gave my main character a uh, a uh, his name was um, not a pseudonym, but but what's it's uh, it was basically oh I can't think of the term, but but um, you know uh, um, 
like uh, crimson is synonymous with red. Mm. Um, you know, uh, Dick is kind of synonymous with Richard, that sort of thing. But uh, I gave him a name that was inspired by uh, Fox Mulder. Mm. Uh, I think it was Lanar or uh, oh my gosh, what <laughs> Moldrake was one of them. <laughs> Moldrake. Um, Moldrake instead of Mulder. And uh, some other word for Fox. I, I can't think of what it was. But anyway, um, yeah, I wrote a short story and I, I <laughs> put it in the artist showcase. And my my principal, you know, um, great guy. But uh, this had a this this obviously had a very positive influence on me. But I remember him reading it. He was perusing the stuff and he actually took the time to read it. And he told me, he said, I think I, I imagine – uh, you're going to be famous someday or, or some comment to that effect. And um, I really appreciated that and um, kind of have, have striven to, to prove him right to at least some modest degree. <laughs> well, and I, I guess I, I would tell you um, that story. Uh, the, the basic premise was, was it the um, Y files or the Z files? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, no, no. It was. It, I, I was, you know, um, still not obviously at seventh grade. You know, not very adept at, at uh, irony. But mm -hmm. the twist was um, the main character, the perspective character. He is imagining being under assault by monsters. Um, and then the, the twist is he's high on drugs and he's what he imagines to be monsters are police officers. But yeah, that was, that was the nature of my initial foray into ironic <laughs> short fiction. Were you pleased with the end result at the time? You know, I was at the time. Mm -hmm. I was. Um, I quickly discovered the frustration of, of rewriting and rewriting and rewriting mm -hmm. and how um, a writer's uh, – how uh, a piece of writing is only done when the writer gives up on it um, and how you could continually revise and improve on mm -hmm. something. I, I learned that very quickly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, ultimately, I, I think I was pretty pleased with that one, especially after what my my principal yeah. said. So, did you have dreams of becoming a writer at this point? Oh yes, absolutely, um, absolutely. Uh, so you did know, I, you? I uh, discovered. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Did you uh, pursue writing as a career then, or no? Well, um, you know, I, I did, I, you know, I had those fanciful notions of, of being a professional writer and I, I, I flirted with the idea, um, didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, out of high school, I actually studied art in the hopes of, of doing something with, with visual arts. Um, that didn't last too long. I got my associates in art. Um, but then I decided, you know, uh, I like I like art. I just don't think I have enough natural talent for that to be what I really dedicate my focus to. Mm. Um, and I decided, you know, I, I think writing is what I I have a better shot at at uh, um, improvements, significant improvements. So I decided to study English. Um, and got my BA in English, and then rather than and I'm I this is also a, a very common story. I'm definitely not alone in this, but um, in the course of studying English, I decided that the best use of my um, schooling and my my education was to become an English teacher, which is something. Um, that that it, it didn't come out of the blue. That that's always been um, one of a handful of plans that I've that I've always had in mind. Did you feel it in you that I can actually teach people this stuff? 
Yeah, mm -hmm. I think so. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I was blessed with some really fantastic teachers when I was a kid. Um, it's funny. In fact, my